Let's bring in Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk. You can watch Pro Football Talk on NBCSN every weekday evening at 5.30 Eastern. Mike joins us now. What was your reaction when you heard Glazer on the show yesterday talk about how the NFL has not seen the video from inside the elevator with Ray Rice? I, I was... I was shocked, and I pressed rewind on the DVR button to make sure that's exactly what I heard. And then I decided I'd better find out why that's the case, if that really is the case. And you know what? That is the case. As best I can tell, the NFL has not seen it. And that, that, that is an amazing twist in this story, in my view. Okay. You're a lawyer, and if you were – if you're representing the NFL – how do you get an opportunity to see that videotape? Uh, and and are, can you ask Ray Rice for cooperation or uh, you know the authority to sign off on you seeing that? Yeah, this is very easy, and it's very simple. Now, you could try to contact the prosecutor's office in Atlantic County, New Jersey. They would tell you we're not giving it to you. But Ray Rice's lawyer has the ability through the criminal prosecution to get the information. Remember, in My Cousin Vinny, I learned more from that movie than I did 18 years practicing law about criminal procedure. He's riding with the prosecutor. He says, hey, I'd like to get a look at your files. And he picks up the phone. He calls the secretary. And he's all, Vinny's all impressed with himself because he managed to sweet talk the guy into giving him the files. Well, you're entitled to it. It's part of the discovery process. The prosecution has to give you anything that they may use against you at trial. That video is part of it. Rice's lawyer got it. All you have to do if you're the NFL is go to Rice's lawyer and say, we want it. You go to Rice and say, we need this. We want to do a full investigation. We want to do a full review. We know you have access to that tape. If you want us to do a meaningful review of this, you need to get us that tape so we can look at it. It would have been a very easy process for the NFL to insist that Rice surrender it. And I don't know why they didn't do it. I don't know whether they tried and Rice stonewalled them. But either way, they could have gotten it if they really wanted it. Well, do you think the NFL chose not to see that videotape? Well, I, I don't think that they would have accidentally just not thought of it or not put two and two together. Maybe, maybe they decided we don't need to see it. Maybe they decided, look, if the prosecutor saw the tape and decided to allow Ray Rice to enter a diversionary program, there's really nothing in there that would shed light on, on what we're doing. But if, if the Stephen A. Smith provocation defense – was used in any way, wouldn't you want to see the tape? Wouldn't you want to at least do your due diligence and corroborate whatever story Janae Palmer Rice was, was selling to Roger Goodell in his office? If she says, I did this, I did this, I did this, and that's what provoked the reaction, if that is what indeed was said, don't you want to see the tape just so you can see for yourself whether that's what comes through on the videotape? Just basic human curiosity. We all want to see it. Why in the world would the commissioner and the rest of the league office not want to see it when they ultimately are going to be imposing discipline on Ray Rice. Unless Ray Rice wanted to protect his wife. Um, I, you know, once again, I, I, I'm an armchair, uh, you know, investigator here. I'm just curious that if you have that and you don't look at it and then it eventually comes out, then this comes up again. And if there's, if it's worse on that videotape when it comes out, then all of a sudden this comes up and the NFL is going to face these questions again that you gave him two games for that. I, I just don't, I don't think it puts them in a, in a position, uh, an advantageous position here. That's another reason to demand to see it because you have to assume at some point, some way, somehow, this thing is going to trickle out. And what will the blowback be? What will the reaction be? We need to know what we're getting into when we suspend this guy for any number of games, and we need to have all the information that's available. That's what the commissioner said when he was mobbed by reporters on Friday. We get everything we possibly can. Well, it was possible for them to get this videotape, and they either didn't, didn't figure out how they could have gotten it, which would be shocking to me, or they just decided they don't need to see it. But you know, it, I mean, the whole situation is just bizarre and upside down and twisted and turned. And, and I guess, you know, we shouldn't be surprised by anything given that the NFL got it so badly wrong in, in issuing only a two-game suspension. He's Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com, weeknights at 5.30 Eastern on NBCSN. Josh Gordon, this is a long appeal process for what everybody thought was cut and dried, that he was going to be down for a year. Why, uh, why is it taking so long to render any kind of verdict here? Well, here's the thing. The hearing... 
lasted most of the day Friday, wrapped up on Monday. So now the person designated by the commissioner to be the hearing officer, Harold Henderson, he has a reasonable time under the substance abuse policy to issue a decision. The expectation is within a week from yesterday we'll get a decision. It's an all-or-nothing thing. We talked about this last week. There's no middle ground if a decision is issued. It's either zero games or 16 games. Now, the middle ground could be reached via negotiations between the NFL and the NFLPA. That possibly could happen this week. Hasn't happened yet, as far as I know. But you could, you could engineer this thing into a certain result and get him maybe six games or eight games, split the baby, split the middle, find something acceptable to both sides. Otherwise, it's going to be zero or it's going to be 16. Before I let you go, tell me something good about the Andy Dalton contract. If uh, you know, all these people piling on Andy Dalton, tell, well, if you were going to say, hey, wait a minute, think about this, what would be the one item you'd point out in that here's contract? Here's what you've got to think about. If you have a quarterback who's taking you to the playoffs three straight years and you're thinking about letting him walk away, who are you going to replace him with? Who, who's your plan B in a league that doesn't have enough good quarterbacks to go around? There are a lot of bad quarterbacks out there. A.J. McCarron, is he going to be the Bengals quarterback in 2015? I, so at a certain point, you have to realize it's a quarterback-driven league. You have a guy that's gotten you to the playoffs. Regardless of whether it's him or something else, he's shown that he can succeed. You've got to pay him because if you don't have him, good luck finding someone else. Thank you, Mike. All right, see you, buddy. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk. ProFootballTalk.com and uh, the show on NBCSN tonight at 5.30 Eastern.